welcome back to the Dr. Supercoach podcast powered by Code Sports. You are on with Pig and I'm joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Pistol. How are you, Pistol? <laughs> oh, we're, we're alive. We're making our way towards the end of the season, which is good. Have, my, my team hasn't dropped off yet, although it's like losing its tyres um, you know, the rims have fallen off. I don't know much about cars. I don't even know if this is a bus. I'm not really sure what I'm describing. But whatever it is, it's limping um, towards the finish. Um, two, three, seven, six for myself. I went up eight spots. So uh, I'm still 2K. Didn't change. Um, very close to the elusive gray arrow. Um, but look, I, I've got a lot of problems. And I'm sure we'll discuss them later. But how, how did you go this week? Mine was not that good. I shot myself in the foot. I had a twenty two eighty one, but it was very self induced. I I went for the uh, the Butters VC. I was really keen on that, but um, I'd I'd been talking him up, and I even put in my captain's video that if you if you want a Sunday captain, it's got to be Caleb Sarong. He's got the awesome matchup. You know, I think his form was just limited by tags. Like Sarong's your best option for a Sunday. You nailed it. And I was, I no, I should have. <laughs> I overthought it. I talked myself out of it. I was going around in circles and I went Isaac Heaney captain and it oh, cost me no. like 70 points. Um, a part of it, you know, I'd been up to 2 a.m., was my, celebrating my wife's 30th. I was a bit hungover, feeling a bit vulnerable. <laughs> I wanted to go for like a nice, safe 100 captain and I thought Heaney would be more of that uh, and turns out it wasn't. Uh, so that hurt me. I mean, I'm still in that. In that zone I've been in all year, my ranking just doesn't move. Um, so it, it didn't kill me that much, but it could have been better. Um, but it was just a, a classic case of overthinking it and not trusting. I'd done the research during the week and Sarong was the one I wanted. And then just an hour before the bounce, I was overthinking it and feeling silly. So that happens. I'll learn. I'll uh, get tattooed on myself. You know, <laughs> don't make last minute captain changes. Oh, I, I can't talk you out of that one. I actually... Um, when McGuinness was named the sub, being a Pies fan, I'm like, oh, well, I'll VC Dacos again for the fifth week in a row. What, what could go wrong? Um, and that shifted me to, I actually originally had uh, English as my captain. And five minutes before, I got huge FOMO on Butters and cap straight captained him, as many people did, and copped it. So um, bad combination of events leading up to that one there. But, you know. You win some, you lose some. As much as you're saying that was a bad decision and maybe the process was, sometimes, unfortunately, the wrong process will yield the right, right results and you could have got lucky and it just didn't work out for you this time. And I wouldn't yeah. recommend doing it again. No, we. <laughs> I'll say we learn from it. Sometimes we learn, sometimes sure we just do we it do. again next year. Absolutely, just do it again. Um, before we jump into some of the issues that many of us are facing, um, shout out to a donator to the Cancer Council, um, Ben Kavi, who is the coach of the uh, Terraputa. Um, very nice to see you at the uh, Slack catch-up as well. He says, a donut in defense with no shellmaker to cover McGovern. I donate for my donut. Thank you, lads. No, thank you very much, Ben, for your generous donation. Unfortunately, it sounds like if McGovern's out again, we might be seeing a donation again next week. <laughs> oh, no. Well, the Therapeuta, one of the best T-shirts going around at Slack catch-up. Absolutely. All right, look. I'm not sure exactly where to start. There's injuries and then there's players that are just terrible. Um, where would you like to start with it? I guess we could talk about some that we definitely know are out. And there's there's some ruck carnage for some for a lot of people. Uh, two of them, especially Nank Curvis, Toby Nank Curvis <laughs> and Tom De Koning. Uh They are both out. Nank with a one-week concussion. De, De Koning for this whole season. So they, they were the two in-form rucks of the comp. A lot of people jumped on one of them when Max Gorn was out. Um, so there's a lot of people hurting with that. Shout out to Dossie. Uh, he messaged me. He's got Nank and Tom DeConing and zero trades and zero cover. Oh, my God. So he just messaged me and he's like, well, that was fun. See you at NBL Supercoach. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, so, that is a disaster. Two POD rucks, both injured in the same week. And I assume he had like Kruger or something as cover as well. Who, who got concussed, so... Uh, yeah, I haven't seen his forward lounge, but I guess so. It's uh, Yeah, so there's people hurting, but for people that do have trades, 
Um, I've, I've done a bit of a rux fixture analysis. I might talk about that a bit later. Uh, no, so stage... shoot, shoot from the hip. Let's oh, do it. Oh, we want to go? All no, right. Nank, Nank and Tom DeConing out. I've looked at the rux fixture. Obviously, we've got five weeks left, so it's really we really can just target these guys for matchups now. The best, the team with the best fixture coming home is West Coast, uh, oh, but well, I that's don't, not helpful. <laughs> I don't think I'd recommend getting Bailey Williams. Too late. B- but the second best, uh, second best fixture is North Melbourne with Tristan Cherry. So he is probably if you have one of these guys or both of them or you've got some carnage, I really love Cherry's run home. Six hundred and five k. He's got a season average of one hundred and twelve. But like these next five, I reckon he could average one hundred and twenty. I'm that big on him. He's got Geelong this week. Sam DeConing, oh, little little teaser. Nank is very high in my VC video this week coming out because Nank, no, Nank is not. Sorry, <laughs> that was my bad. Cherry is very high. Okay, uh, because Sam DeConing is essentially the worst ruckman in the league at winning hitouts. Uh, the, the data backs that up. So Cherry could have five thousand hitouts this week. He then has Richmond, who have been giving up a lot of points, West Coast, Bulldogs, and Hawthorne, who have all been giving up lots of points. So he actually has five super easy matchups to come home. So I think Cherry is the one you want. Yeah, absolutely. We then, yeah, do you, do you agree with, yeah, if you've got them, Cherry? Yeah, I mean, I think it pretty much has to be at this point. Yeah. Um, I like how you said Sam DeConing is the worst ruck to to win hit outs. I mean, I, I watched um, Charlie Camwin in a ruck contest and he did pretty well this week, so he might be better than him. Um, <laughs> and I saw Pendlebury in the ruck contest. He didn't get much air. Um, I think he was just trying to preserve his body. Um, some interesting time. rucks being thrown up this weekend. Yeah, so I guess for, for guys that have attended over 300 ruck contests, <laughs> he is the worst <laughs> yep. at winning the hit out. He wins it in 28% of his ruck contests, which means... Uh, Whatever that is, the other seventy-two percent. There's a hit out available for the other dude. He's only been a ruck for like three weeks of his career, so yeah, I can't really blame him. Oh no, I'm not blaming him at all. I actually own him. I, I got him in my defence a few weeks ago, and oh boy, like, he had a bad one two weeks ago. But I'm pretty confident he's giving me like ninety-fives just as that solo ruck. So I'm uh, not... so maybe we'll start him next year. Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe it'll be both to Koning starting in the ruck line. Oh my god, nightmare. Uh, then we've got Carlton and Geelong. Both have really nice runs. So Carlton, I don't think you're really going to get pit net. Geelong, you know, Soul Ruck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's like a ninety dude. <laughs> no, we'll go with uh, we'll go with Sherry. As I said, my boy Sam DeConing actually has the fourth easiest run, but he's not Ruck eligible, so it do, it's a bit irrelevant. Yep. Uh, Hawthorne then have the fifth easiest run, so I think Lloyd Meek is an option if you've only got five five four k. Uh, he's got a season average of one hundred and four. He's got Adelaide this week, which is a little bit harder, but then he's got GWS, Carlton, Richmond. They're all really easy. He does finish with North and Cherry in the grand fi- Supercoach Grand Final, so that's a bit of a hard one. Um, but if you're kind of playing more for rank and you've only got that amount, I don't mind Meek. Nah. You don't? <laughs> you've, you've been an owner. I've, I, I like it, but it's, it's just not... I mean, unless you have two that are out. He's, he's probably my third choice of uh rucks but we're getting there we're, we're getting our way through him he's he is 500k uh no, 50k cheaper than the other guys so i guess that's where it could come in yeah for sure. adelaide adelaide have the next i don't think you'd really care about riley o'brien you mean strawn as my r3 coming back in to save everyone never know. i'm actually looking at the day which could be very soon that riley o'brien gets dropped and riley philthorpe just takes over the ruck he's going oh, to yeah. be incredible that's, that's next year at best just protect his body. Week. Protect his body. I think he's just come yeah. back from injury. Uh, then the seventh easiest run is Melbourne. So you could look at Max Gorn, five ninety nine. Like he's got a season average of one twenty four. We know what he can do. Mm-hmm. He's got GWS, Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, Gold Coast, and Hawthorne. So and Collingwood. Sh- yeah. Oh, yeah, Collingwood to finish. So really, really easy run. That's great. You know, how's is- how's that not the best run? That's amazing. Ruck run with um, yeah. Port playing sweet and Gold Coast mm. playing Moyle. I wouldn't be surprised if the data is not fully updated, like it's using whole season data and maybe counting wits still a bit. So that might skew it a bit. So it's actually might be easier than seventh. You're right. So Briggs and English and Sweet and Moyle and Cameron, all really easy matchups. 
you know, that 124 average Gorn's doing, he could do that for the next five, I reckon. It's just, do you, how do you feel? Do you kind of trust him coming back from the injury? You think he's he's good to go? I mean, he did seem really sprightly. Like, he was up and almost ready to go um, last week. Like, they showed him in the rooms. He was bouncing around. He did not seem to have a care in the world. That seemed like a big deal. So, I mean, he should be fine. I just really hate bringing in rucks who have already had an injury, especially foot issues, because that feels like, you know, it's at risk of them getting injured again. But every ruck has been injured at some stage of season pretty yeah. much. So I don't think there is like a safe choice here. Um, I mean, Grundy is probably like the most sturdy and now I've just jinxed mm-hmm. it and it's not going to go well for him. But Touch everyone wood. else is like, you know, Marshall and English, even Sherry, like they've all had their fair share of injury history historically. And Meeks yeah. just come back from injury. Um, that doesn't leave anybody. <laughs> so... Like Gorn and Melbourne right now, they're equal ninth uh, on percentage or they're 10th on the ladder but ninth on percentage. So they generally have a finals chance to play for. Yeah. Um, some hardish games, but their captain coming back, I feel like Max will be wanting to do everything he can yeah. to kind of give them a chance and lift them over the line. So I am really firm on Cherry, but I, I wouldn't be against going Max. You know, Max will be a bit of a pod now probably with people trading him out. That's not a bad option as well. I reckon it's between those two if you're trading someone in four four rankings especially. Yeah, yeah. And what about Marshall in English? Yeah, so uh, Marshall Marshall has a really hard next two, but then his last three are, are the easiest. That's super easy. So if you're someone that's, you know, playing for leagues, you may be sitting in first or second and you're, you're going to make your finals and you, you might even get a free hit the first week. If you want a bit of a point of difference, then Marshall's last three are really nice. Uh, Brody Grundy's a little bit of the opposite. He's got a really nice next three, but then his last two in the Supercoach finals are tough. So Grundy's okay, but you know if you're playing for league especially, I wouldn't look at him. And then English, uh, if I had trades, I'd be trading English out right now. No, don't tell me that. He's got the second hardest run home. So he has to play Grundy, Gorn, Riley O'Brien, and Cherry still in his last five games, and they're all they're all tough matchups. So I would not be recommending anyone get Tim English. Well, uh, the, I wish the ha- good news is we probably you know when we cop a ruck injury in the next fortnight, we can just trade them to Marshall. Yeah, that is or well, what trades? <laughs> oh, I've I've got one. Sorry, jeez. I'm potentially Let's... using mine this week. Um, <laughs> The other, the other option, uh, Darcy Cameron is in form. He's got two 130s in a row. I actually think he could put two more 130s the next two weeks. He's got re- two really nice matchups. Yeah. The issue for them, him then is that his last three are quite hard. So the Cox is coming back too. So is, yeah, he'll, tell me about that. I, I no, he'll be he'll be back much. in the next couple of weeks, and he'll be rocking, taking some relief off uh, Cameron because he's had a big load over the last um, two months so I wouldn't really go near uh, Cameron at the moment and I, I think Pi is when we don't have much to play for uh, mathematically which is probably mm. coming up unfortunately uh, we might try some funky things as well so I, I'd be staying away so you're saying Cox is going to be taking the load <laughs> is that what I said I that thought, that's like what something I, I would accidentally say yeah um, yes yes uh, quite, quite the observation yeah, very good. Well, Cherry and Max Gorn are our two favourites consensus. But yes. if you're in a really easy, cruisy uh, place to make league finals, Marshall could be an option. All I heard was Bailey Williams. Yeah, number one. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> Is Matt right. Flynn back? Let's, uh, let's get Matt <laughs> Flynn. Well, th- thank you for going through the in-depth rack analysis. I think, um, look, it's not like... Uh, Actually, I will throw one out to you. If if Gorn misses again, on the very off chance, because he did look fine. Yep. And I guess a lot of people were relying on Kruger as cover. Are you just copying? Mm. Are you just copying that at this point? I'm still trying to avoid a donut, but I don't like. If you've held Gorn for the last two, you're probably holding him again. This Kruger out is actually a real spanner in the works, and I'm. We might even have to talk through it a bit because actually I'm in this situation except with Nank. So I yeah. am copying a donut if I don't use my last trade. 
So I have to use my last trade to save a donut. So it could be like Nank to Cherry. It could be like, I don't know, crew, uh, Fisher or someone to Luke Jackson. It could be something like that to avoid a donut. I'm, I'm quite torn. I am trying to avoid donuts, but I still think Nank's going to be really good. And I don't love Jackson that much. And Kruger's Jackson a- probably is fit, but might not be fit as well. Yeah, he had a leg knock of some kind, I believe. And I saw a couple of Freo twan- fans on Twitter just saying he was just sub, uh, just rested precautionary because they were winning by so much. Um, so that could be it. But yeah. what about Darcy I'd- as an option? Because his the ruck run for Freo is insanely good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, well, it not is. insanely. It's it's very good to be it right up there. But yeah. could you trust Darcy? All the injury ruckman. I mean, you may as well. <laughs> I don't mind it. That that one is fun. He uh, there aren't many ruckmen that have a one eighty ceiling, and he is one of them on his day. I just think him sharing with Luke Jackson caps him a lot. Yeah. Um, but apart from S, he's got Essendon, which has been like historically hard with their running one or two. But he does have West Coast, Geelong, GWS, and Port. <laughs> That's four fun. very good games for ruckmen. So, I mean, why not have a yolo, yolo swing at the fence? No. Don't do that. No? <laughs> Just pick Sherry and get that over and done with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think we fully answered that question. What do you think in that situation with whether it's an ankle or Gorn and Kruger's your cover? Would you trade to avoid a donut? So I think there's a couple of things at play. One, you need to know how's your cover on the other lines. Like if you have no backline cover. It's mm-hmm. probably, I'd say, likely you're going to cop a, a defender resting or injury at some stage before the end of the season, and that might be more than one week, so I, I might save it in that case. Um, same as in your forward line. It's given how forwards are dropping like flies, I feel like we'll be lucky to make it through another week with no forward injury. Um, and I, given Cox's return, I don't think Kruger lasts, so we're right. probably losing him anyway. Um, so there's going to be a less ruck, the less forward cover available soon there. So I would probably, if it's just a one weaker for neck, which I guess you can't really guarantee, which is a scary thing. Um, Let's assume it is. For one week, I would, I'd just cop it. I know you don't necessarily mean to, and it screams against everything that you say, but you do get a guy that is, or has been, you know, averaging one thirty over the last seven, eight weeks, and having that on the run home as, a, I guess, captaincy and as a, I guess, a bit of a POD is quite good, and you're, you're only trading him to somebody who is worse. It's basically trading a top-of-the-line guy to somebody worse with your last trade, um, which doesn't feel great when you might cop an injury in the forward line. I mean, look, Zorko got a knock in the first minute of the game and looked a bit shaky. I mean, yep. Caldwell got um, subbed out. He's okay, but uh, you never know with all these sorts of knocks going on. And it's only round 20. Five weeks is a long time. A lot can happen, isn't it? I've, so like, many weeks. I'm so, I'm so against copying a donut, but like this would be my last trade and it would be some other people's last trade as well. I do see what you like. A three-week injury would hurt a lot more than a, a one-week. Yes. Unfortunately... You got. It's actually funny. Look, I'm not. I'm not bringing this up to to throw it in your face because I actually changed my mind when we discussed it last time about the twenty third premium versus mm-hmm. twenty two, a stronger twenty two and more trades. Um, sometimes you just get unlucky and you have twenty two players and you keep copping injuries and you use your trades and then you're out. I think I I, I was actually on board with the twenty two premiums, but I've had twenty three and. It's unfortunate that I have Raoul. Sure, that's that's on me. Could have picked Merritt at the time for the same price. Um, but with all these one-week injuries, like um, well, McGovern's been two weeks, and now I've got Dawson that got concussed, so Dawson will be missing. Like I'm now just playing Raoul every week instead of having to trade these guys. Um, and yeah, it saved me nice. so many trades. Like I've probably saved three or four trades now just because of having that extra premium. Yep. No, I think it's a really good point. And there were some of the teams at the pointy end that even had 24 premiums 
Yes. Um, <laughs> and like whoever it might be, McCurtra or Rosie is like a 24th. And so, yeah, I, I do agree this year. Like it seems like we've had a lot of carnage, especially in the last two or three weeks. And that has really been beneficial. I think it's, um, I was looking the other day, Thunderlips, Gray. He has so many premiums going on. Um, we're talking, he's got Yo as his D7, Oliver as his M9, and Harley Reid as his F7. <laughs> Just flying, that's so good. Uh, in 29th overall, if anyone wanted to keep an eye on this team. The cover is unreal. It's a shame Oliver didn't pull through, um, but that would have been <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's pretty insane. Um, the team some people have put together, yeah. unfortunately not me, but... Um, I do think it, it's it's always going to be a debate every year. Would you rather have 22 premiums or would you have the extra premium? And it's going to be different every year based on how mm. many one-weekers and knocks you get. I mean, when you asked me earlier in the season, I was like, yeah, there's all the one-week suspensions um, that were handing out last year. And there hasn't been that many one-week suspensions this year, but instead there's been... Injuries. Like concussions. <laughs> yeah. You know, people getting the head knocks and missing a week. Uh, so, yeah, maybe right idea and flute the process um, to make the right choice, even though I changed my mind halfway and agreed with you. Um, I'm, lean, I'm leaning to all the way back now to 23 premiums is the right idea. I mean, I, I think you're very right in that it's year to year. Like, off the top of my head last year when I was charging home and finishing well. I feel like it was only Dunkley and Laird off the top of my head that I kind of had that got injured in the last six weeks. Um, yeah. But this year it feels like there's been eight of them. So, yeah, That's year good. to year definitely. But this year absolutely paying off and um, who knows what happens next year. But you're definitely right about the suspensions. There was a lot of suspensions last year and there's actually been a, a huge drop-off this year. But, yeah. Hard to predict, isn't it? And who knows what happens the next five? Anything could Absolutely. happen. I'm um, just, um, well, actually, I might still need to use my last trade pending who's available and who's not. It's a, it's it's pretty hard to um, know what's going on with players like Dawson, um, which, you know, a lot of people have. He's been scoring terribly and now he's out for a week. And ironically, he was looking pretty good until he got concussed. I think he was on... He was, I yeah, seventy six or something at three quarter time, or sixty five at half time, or yeah. something like that. I think it was in the sixties at half time, and from my eye, I was playing like more of a midfield role than he had been beforehand. So, a shame and a bad time to get concussed. You, what, what, what do you think people should do with him? Like, a out a week, but b not in that greater form, apart from maybe a half. Really depends on what your cover is and what your trades are. I mean, I don't have Dowling, which would have made a world of difference if I had had two capable fades like Raul and Dowling in the forward line or something, I'd be flying. Um, I think if you're in that situation, I mean, you probably, if you can loophole between them, you probably get an 80 score um, and that's that's okay for a week before you get Dawson back. It's not ideal um, and probably lets you trade Raul next week, which you might enjoy more. Um but at this stage of the season, it's really hard to trade out a player that's a warm body as long as they're actually a warm body. I mean, Dawson's out for one week, so he's a cold body for a week, but he's a warm body overall. Yeah. Um, you know, it's my, my thinking with someone like, you know, Raul or even Fisher. Let's talk more about Fisher than Raul because it's less, less likely for Raul. But for Fisher, I, I don't know if he's best 22 anymore. Like, I think he's played himself out of the team. I, yeah, I'm worried about that too. Like I was very sure that he could have been a, a starting sub last week and it turns out he was the, the subbed out. Um, but there's no guarantee that he's not the starting sub or not maybe not even named next week. I, I am quite worried about that. But yeah, it's, it's someone's got to have a couple of trades maybe to be able to do something with it. Like would you use the last trade to get rid of Fisher? Is he that bad? Um, there's... It's it's a lot of unknowns for me to be honest with with Zach. It's it, it's not it's a terrible situation. I'm not gonna lie. The only good thing about it is he plays on Saturday, like the first game on Saturday. So if you can wait, which I imagine everyone can wait, um, to see if he's the sub or not, that would help. Um, 
Yeah. I think if he's named and he's playing, I'd probably lean to keeping him because you know he's just one week away from a really good score. It's not like his role is too bad. Um, but I'm genuinely worried he's going to be dropped or be the starting sub now. Like he's, he's played himself out of the team. And in that case, then you have to trade. You're not going to hold him through it because you don't know if he's ever going to return. That's, that's you know, the equivalent of a season-ending injury because he might just not play in the yeah. team. So that's a forced trade then. Even if it is your last trade, I'd be getting rid of him. Um, even if you had Dowling as cover because, again, that's, it's the equivalent of a season-ending injury. So in that case, Pig... I guess I would have, before I get to that, who would what is is that something similar to what you would do? Yeah, I think it is, and you're right about him playing that first game Saturday. You'll know, like quite a lot of people will have either Manor or Dowling on their forward line bench. So, I mean, you could just trade Fisher straight up if he's sub. That's fine. Um, or if you don't have trades, or you're not, or you might want to save it for another injury down the track. You know, you could just put Manor or Dowling on in his place. So. At least this week he plays early enough that we... And I'm just looking ahead. Next week he also plays early Saturday. I mean, if he's still in. So at least the fixture helps us a little bit with him. But, yeah, if he's not named, it's a little bit like Sexton, I guess. They, we put them both in the same boat where they we didn't love them at the start of the year because we didn't think they were actually that good and would they be best 22. Um, and they got in best 22 because of some fortunate fortuitous circumstances but now that their teams are kind of healthy they seem a little bit on the outer so if he gets dropped yeah get rid of him and who would you trade him to i mean he, fortunately he holds quite a bit of value 473k is not it's not a row situation which i know we'll circle back to but how where do you go for, for fisher the forward line is tough i still think you know there's I will say, I'll just say the Heaney, Flanders and Zorko, like I think everyone would have them. But if you don't and can get to them, I mean, that's a no-brainer kind of yeah. thing. I still really like Dylan Moore. He's a little bit more expensive, but he's just like he's getting over 20 possessions every game and getting a little bit of midf- midfield time, but pushing up the ground. I think he's a really nice option. Uh, Coldwell is still incredible. I think Darcy Parrish should be back quite soon. Um, and as a Bombers fan, I do think midfield is the only position that Parrish really can play. But I think Coldwell's done well enough that he's kind of going to be that third slash fourth string in there. So I think he's still a really good option. And like even our last couple of games where Essendon have been really bad, Coldwell's been incredible. Like 110 so against Melbourne when we struggled. He was on 110 before he got knocked out and then lost points for scaling. So, sorry, not knocked out. He got winded. Um <laughs> It was the official line. So, yeah, Coldwell, amazing. There's a few other guys. Like, I actually quite like Mason Wood. Yep. Uh, he's just got forward status in this last round of DPP changes. I think it was after round 18. Uh, he's like he's a, he's a full-time winger. He just plays up and down the ground as he wants. Went quite well against West Coast on the weekend, but West Coast kind of just let those guys do whatever they want. So that's... Not going to replicate that all the time, but I actually think he's a really nice, safe kind of 20 disposals and quite a few marks kind of guy. You only need like a 90s guy plug in that spot. And I actually think Mason Wood's quite quite a good option for that. Yeah. No, I, I think um, pretty much nailed it. I like Dylan Moore. I mentioned him a couple of times. I think you can, you know, if Luke Jackson's fit, you know, if you're paying up, you can get those sorts of guys. Down is a lot harder. You're like, you're, you're trying to pick from... The, the fruit that have been thrown in the bin at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not great. Um, Wood is not a bad shout. I think you could probably look um, perhaps at someone with a really good draw. Um, Hawkins comes to mind. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Jeremy Cameron, though, in the not kidding way. Uh, Geelong play North Melbourne this week. They play Adelaide at GMHBA. They, Frio is a tough one, but then Saints and... Uh, West Coast to finish the year and they need to win. They need to try to finish top two. Yep. So I feel like Jeremy Cameron's got a lot to play for. I know that he scored poorly last week, but it was in the wet, which did not suit him at all. Um, so he's someone that I think I would be really, really considering. Um, otherwise, if you really want to take a flyer, you want to take a, someone with a little bit of X factor and... 
I uh, think you might know where I'm going with this, and it's unfortunate <laughs> I have to make the suggestion. But um, Jack Ginnivan, 21 touches to half time against the Pies, and I know he was inspired because he was playing against Collingwood. But Hawthorne, they have a pretty tasty draw. I mean, they play Crows and GWS at home, and then they play um, Carlton, which is tough. And they finish the year at... Sorry, they, they play them away, actually, do they? Yeah, I think they play them away. No bad. They do play them away. Not as tasty as I was thinking. But they do finish off the season um, playing Richmond and North Melbourne. And if he's going to be moving up the ground a lot more and getting um, you know touches to go with his goals, then he's going to be a bit of an explosive option. So I think if you want to have a bit of fun with it, with a, an Uber POD, I think you can look kind of uh, in that Jack Genuine direction. I can't believe I said that on the podcast. This is embarrassing. Well, he's under 400K. I mean, people, if they're going from Fisher, probably have a bit more than that. But if, I don't know, maybe they're doing two trades and that's all they got. It's not It's not that bad. A 90 the week before from 21 touches obviously destroyed Collingwood. Um, but, you know, 250s the weeks before that with like around 15 disposals isn't no. ideal. Um, and I don't love the GWS and the Colton matchups. He still has to come. I think he could struggle to score in them a bit. But yeah, finishing with Richmond and North, he could have a nice little run home for finals. Yeah, the other team that's got a decent run home for finals, Brisbane. They've got Gold Coast, St Kilda, GWS at home, Collingwood, and Essendon. Um, they should really destroy a lot of those teams. So if you're looking at uh, Big Joey Danaher, if you want someone to do the 80s or 85s. Yeah, I mean, it's not. They, we're not picking good options. Like these are all very is average it, options. But he, I think he's uh, at least have to consider him. There are there is a point in the season where we can start looking at key forwards for a couple of games. Spike, are we still five weeks away too early for that? <laughs> um, we're probably not. I think if you get a good run, if you've got like four games out of your five that you think they could spike a score. Like, you know, there's that Kerno 180 last season really helped elevate his, I guess, overall average. And some people did take the pump with five weeks to go and they thought, yeah, okay, he's chasing the Coleman. Um, let's just give it a crack. And it really paid off. And I think you, there's potential in some of these guys that are hunting the Coleman. I don't know if it's the, the Hogan's or the Tracy's or whatever it might be, but some of these guys can just absolutely explode. And then in the last couple of games, the teammates, when... There's not that much look to play for. for. Yeah, they, they purposely look for them to feed them goals to see if they can you know, get them over the line to win the, the Coleman. So there's definitely you know method to the madness um, with those. And again, big big Charlie Kerno, uh, as much as he put out that 30 a couple of weeks ago, he's only 390-odd K. I still think he's a really solid option if you don't have him. That draw home of yeah. Port, Collingwood, Hawthorne, West Coast, St Kilda in a team that needs to fight for top two as well. And he's fighting personally to win the Coleman medal. Um, you know, these things, it just I'm pretty sure it's going to be a decent selection. No, I, I fully agree. If you're looking at that price, I, I actually think Kerno is one of the best for hit the price he is. Jesse Hogan and Josh Tracy. Jesse Hogan has a 111 three-round average. Josh Tracy has a 105, and they're both coming off big games. Freo have a really nice run for key forwards, yeah. but... GWS is terrible, know, I'm kind of, pretty sure. Yeah, that, you're right. They, they're kind of middle or a bit hard. So, I mean, they're options because they're both fighting. I do believe there is something in the targeting key forwards that are fighting for the Coleman medal. So, there is something there. For those two especially, I think it's a, five weeks is a bit too many to yeah. trust them. I, I agree. I could I could probably trust Kerno, maybe even Jeremy Cameron for five, but... Um, Ben King and Gold Coast actually have the best run for key forwards coming home. But I just looked, he's coming off a 30. That would take a fair bit of... No, that's the, he's in a different point uh, scoring category than Jeremy Cameron. Yeah, he's not, a, he's not a big accumulator of the footy. He does, if you need a, like a round 24 spike, uh, he plays Richmond in the last round and might be on the, on the hunt for a near Coleman, but I wouldn't do it for five rounds. No, he can't, can't buy a goal at the moment, so I'd be... I probably wouldn't even do it for one, to nah, be honest. Nah, stay away from that one. <laughs> but, uh, like, genuinely, someone like Sean Manor actually might be an okay F6 for the rest of the year. He's, like, leading Geelong in tackles most weeks. I think he had eight last week. 
He's getting a lot of CBAs and like, I mean, he's a rookie, 312K. He's gone up a bit, but that's not the worst yeah, F6. Yeah, he's looking really solid. Um, it's unfortunate he couldn't get a game earlier in the year because we all would have picked him as well. Um, yeah. Or getting three games, I should say. Got one of them. Um, so that's kind of frustrating. But uh, yeah, that's that's probably the end of where I would look. It's not it's not pretty down down there. Yeah, I'm just scrolling and I should stop yeah, no, scrolling. It's, it's, if you've scro- it's you've scrolled too far like. now, you're in the 200s, I'm sure. I'm in the I'm in the Riley West and Brad close category, so let's close, close the that. tab, close the computer. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Just go on. <laughs> Alrighty, so I think it's time we 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 circle back around. We're already looking in a really cheap category. What do we do with Matt Rao? Four hundred and twenty-one thousand oh. uh, coming off. 51. For those that don't know because they don't own him, I am very jealous. Um, he's currently in... I don't know how to describe his form. Let's say he's got a five-round average of 71 as a midfielder, a three-round average of 65, and he is not injury-affected. This is a guy who is averaging over 100 on the season because for the first seven weeks, he was averaging 131 super coach points. And now he is not averaging <laughs> half of that in his last seven games. That's absolutely absurd. It's such an insane drop off, and people bought him for six hundred and fifty k, and I just feel so sorry for those people. Yeah, I didn't pay all that, but I definitely uh, could have selected Zeret instead of him. So <laughs> I've 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 made some mistakes. But what what do you do? I guess there's a difference between if he's your your M eight and if he's your M nine. But we're assuming he's your M eight. How much longer should you wait before you just say enough is enough? I'd rather play a rookie than take another mid fifty score. It's, I'd, I'd, I'm really struggling to know if I would ever get to the point where I play a rookie over him because he like has 130 <laughs> potential at the start of the year. He doesn't now, but imagine if he put that out while he's on your bench, you'd be angry. So I'm not sure if I'd ever really get to the point. Like if you can loop him with a mana or a dowling, cool. That's I think you nice. do that. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I'd ever like just straight field <laughs> one. What them score over do you take? Because... <laughs> the 80. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. I think so too. Um, but if I guess another discussion is if you if people have the trade but like no cash, is there anyone better around his price? And I feel like even when he was 500, I was saying like, there's probably not many people better, but he, he's just been that bad recently. It's. Do you go for like just a safe but average like Willem Drew just to like get you an 85 or a 90 every week? Is that worth a trade? I'm not sure. I mean, Clayton Oliver. Connor Nash. <laughs> yeah. Trade Rao to Oliver. Like, where are we going with this? I, I don't think. I don't think you can do anything. Um, yeah, look if Fisher is if Fisher's drops, maybe you can look at someone like Bailey Scott. Um, honestly, your best bet in the price range is four hundred thirty-five k Sam DeConing. I think. Um, yeah, my boy. Your boy with his his ruck run. Um, honestly, he's probably the guy <laughs> that I would trade. Yeah. I'd trade Rao to if I were to trade him. I look. I mean, he's my M9. I would love to trade him. I really would. But as an M9, it just doesn't feel worth it. As an M8, I could... And as an M8 who doesn't have Dowling and doesn't have mana, I think I would be... I'd be just going for it with Deconing because that, as much as a, you know, saving... You know, a one-week injury, if someone's out and you have a trade, it's it, let's say it's 100 points, right? You have no cover. You're stopping yourself with a donut. Um, you know, two weeks out, 200 points, blah, 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 blah. Rao to De Koning, What if, if Rao's going to be putting the 60 average out from here because he's just disappeared and became a pumpkin? And you can't even say that's unrealistic because that's, what he's, that's what he's averaging. So it's, it's not really unrealistic. If De Koning averages, you know, 95 for the last five rounds, 
we're we're talking thirty five points a week for five weeks. I mean, it's uh, close to two hundred points, one hundred seventy five points. We it, that's almost two donuts. And better for your mental health too. <laughs> Not only Matt until Rao. Sam Dakota kind of gets injured as well, and then you're like, "What have I done?" Uh, um, yeah. The uh, the S in SDK stands for superior, superior to Well, it's the last one standing. Maybe it stands for standing. Yeah. Standing to <laughs> Hey, Mason Woods around oh, that price. You could look at him as well. Look, I mean, look at least to Koning, <laughs> At least he's playing as a ruck. Like I can't, yeah. I can't knock the role. I mean. I can knock his ability of winning the ball, uh, winning the hitouts, I should say, um, but I'm not going to knock the roll. He's he, he actually had 95 percent ruck time last week. I imagine that's because Blitzarves went to to Bont for parts of the game, but um, yeah, yeah, the roll's great. And you just told me the ruck run's not not too shabby. Um, yeah, he's got North and Adelaide in the next two, which will be a bit yeah. tricky. But then, then it gets easier for his last three. So, ninety-five average, I think, for for superior to Koning is not out of the out of the question. Oh, I don't think I'd pull it this week against Cherry. It just seems like a bad idea, doesn't it? Well, who's let's see, who's Rao got? Rao against Brisbane. That seems. Like... <laughs> Look, I, I think we we've, we've come to accept we're not going to get any anything out of Rao now. I think you you loop with Dowling. Um, you, you you definitely look with Manor against North Melbourne. You're probably taking both of those scores over yeah. Al and, you, and you're hoping for the best. Unfortunately, I'm looping with uh, Garcia from Saints and he was a sub and at one stage he was on negative two at half time, and I still considered taking it over Al. So, um, <laughs> it's, I love that. I don't blame you. It's, <laughs> it's dire. It's, a, it's not a fun situation <laughs> to be a Raul owner. I can't believe it got to this. Oh, it's just such an insane contrast from his start of the year to now. Alrighty, so, Yo, McGovern, do you think they'll be back this week? I know it's a hard question to answer, but, you know, if not, what do you do with them? I'm pretty confident Yo's back. I think his was just a little little niggle. I, like, I've got him in my team and I haven't really worried about him not being back. Maybe I should. Um, so, I'm pretty happy with him. Gorn, I'm really hopeful, is back as well. McGovern's the interesting one, like just with the punctured lung just being a bit unknown. I guess you do exactly the same as what you did last week. Like if you held them last week, I guess you're holding them again. If you traded them last week, then you don't have to worry about it. I think it's. Uh, I think McGovern's probably going to get up for the, you know, against Freo. Big grudge match. There's always extra inspiration. To come back, I'd be very surprised if him and, and Yo didn't come in for the game. Yeah, I agree. So at this stage, I'm not even worried about it. He's firmly on my field, and Dawson is on my bench. Yeah. And if McGovern is out, I actually will have to trade him because <laughs> my even using DBB, my cover is Kruger, who's also injured, um, and I've got Dawson and McGovern who are both out. So I, it's actually playing Garcia, which. You know, doesn't sound massively appealing. Um, yeah. So I'm probably trading McGovern. And, not, and then I'm fairly confident Gorn's back, like we said, currently in 10th on the ladder and a genuine chance to make finals if they win a few. Um, he's their captain. I feel like he's got a bit to play for. You you're, you said you assessed his gate. You, you know, you love, <laughs> you're love. you always on gate watch, love looking at his gate. Did, did he pass the gate test? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's... It's 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 all fine there. You can you can take take that one not at, to the bank. Not not at Lockie Whitfield gate levels, but no, pretty it's close. Di- very very different situation. That's a, it's embarrassing that you even <laughs> think that that's a, a similar sort of gate. Come on, it's like you've never watched gates before. Well, you assessed you assessed Max Gorn's gate uh, when he had that injury test and playing coming up against St Kilda this year. You watched the video and said his gate's yeah. good, and then he went one eighty. Right. That's uh, look, you you either gate it or you don't. It's probably time time to end the podcast on that. God. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Have you got any podcast questions? There was one. It it actually came to me through Twitter, and it was I thought it was quite an interesting one. Someone was asking, "Do we think like what's the risk or the worry 
that teams in the last round or two kind of rest and manage players if they've locked up their spot. Like, let's say Sydney in round 24 have like locked up top spot. Is there much of a risk for managing someone like Heaney or Grundy or is it that kind of bye week off thing, we're not too worried about it now and I guess with that far into the season that you might not even have trades to be able to do anything about it, but is it something to worry about or not really? No, I think uh, this year it's a bit bit too tight up top. Every win like matters. I mean, maybe less so for Swans, but they're not in great form and they need to, to get some wins on the board, so I, I wouldn't even be thinking of that at the moment, so... That's not somebody I would stress. Um, it's, yep. it's not a stress at all. Um, I do. St- it's definitely a. It's definitely a thing we have in like NBA fantasy and other leagues like that, where it's kind of they their games just roll straight into playoffs. But like you said, a we're condensed here, but b you know there's a week off in between, so some teams will have like a twelve day break before they play, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got a couple of podcast questions for you. One, Cam right. is asking, is Stuart a genuine trade in target now? I do like his role. Like this midfield role he's playing, he gets some first access to it, but he's still floating back and being the intercept marker, and it's kind of a little bit the best of both worlds. So I actually don't mind it if, if that's kind of the price you've got. I think I'd probably like if you've got more money to get someone, you know, like one of the someone we know is like a definite top six defender. I would probably still prefer to do that, but I'll just have a look at what the price Stewart 527. is. 527. 527. So he's actually getting up there in price with some of those good guys. Three round average of 114. I mean, yeah, why not? I, I do think he's probably going to keep up. Maybe one, his 114 three round average is a little bit higher, but no, I like his role a lot. All righty. What do you think? Because he's got slightly positive, like if he's playing inside midfielder, he's got a he's got a positive matchup, like positive run home. Uh, if he goes to defence, I just remember off the top of my head, I was talking about Max Holmes last week. Uh, he also has a good run, so yeah, good run coming home for Tom. I I probably would think about it. <laughs> Geelong does have a good run coming home. Um, I do like him as well, so yeah, I think it's it's not too bad. Um, yeah. So we've already spoken about the Fisher one, but uh, Kevin asks, for those of us still with trades, uh, but we're playing for leagues. He said he's got three left. So he's still got one rookie on field, but then he's got Raul and Fisher. Should he just fix those premiums first and then, you know, I guess loop the rookies? Or should he be getting that last upgrade first and hold the trades? It's tough because you definitely don't want rookies on field in Supercoach finals. And I guess if Kevin's asking this, he's pretty confident. Yeah, you've got to make finals, finals first. The Otherwise, there's no point. Yeah. Make sure, yeah. If, if you need to do the trade to get the score to make finals this week, do it. But if you're sitting comfortably, I guess you can kind of view it as you've got like two weeks to fix your team because you've got your trades this week, kind of, I guess, a free week, and then more trades before the finals start. So... I guess kind of plan it out a little bit, like we were doing at the buys and whatnot. Plan out what you want your final team to look like with those two trades, probably. I'd say try and leave one in the bank for like an injury in the last week or two. Um, but I'd probably think about using those two trades in the next two weeks and um, getting the best team available. And it probably is getting the rookie off the field because you really don't want that. Like a rookie could still spit out a 30. So could Ralph. I mean, Fisher just did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I think I'd rather a full team with, oh, gross to say, but I think I'd rather a full brackets primo team, uh, even if that includes Raul and Fisher. Unless it is Mana, like if he's your rookie, maybe that's okay. How are you sitting on this one? Because it's uh, some of the rookies are nearly as good as Fisher. I think and Raul. it depends on the rookies. That's that's the answer. Like if you've got yeah. Dowling and yeah. Mana, um, I think at this point it sounds silly, but like. I feel more confident in Mana than, than Fisher if he doesn't play. And and if that's the case, you can kind of just hold Fisher and wait and see a bit longer. Um, if that's not the case and you're, you're loopholing Kruger and somebody else, then... Yeah. Your Garcia. Yeah, like Garcia, probably not. Maybe, maybe some, I don't know, some other rookie. Um, mm-hmm. 
then I think you've got to try and get those guys off the field. Um, I do think, though, back to earlier in the podcast, unfortunately, I think you're holding Raul um, because there's a, a chance, there's a world in which Fisher's just not best 22 and that, that kills you. Then you're relying on another rookie and it's it's not even an option. Yep. So even, even if you had Fisher and one trade left, I see Anthony um, has also asked about having Fisher, one trade left and focusing on lead. Uh, focusing on league um, at that stage if you can make your finals without trading Fisher I would just wait until finals and then trade him to somebody um, unless you know you probably got one more sub game for Fisher his price is going to tank and because Jeremy Cameron got 35 you're probably still in that price range and you can give it another week um, but honestly if it's if he is a sub and you're playing for league you can you can totally just make the move i don't think there's um anything wrong with going early on someone um outside of you know the increased injury risk but you are gonna take a player that's not best 22 anyway so there's not much difference there yeah i think the the kind of the summary we've got to is holding Rao over fisher because fisher could just not be best 22 could be sub could give you a 38 Rao for all his flaws, he still ha- he hasn't given you a 38 and he hasn't been sub, so that's something a bit better than Fisher. Alrighty. Well, that's that's all I've got. Um, I'm not sure how you're sitting. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's all I wanted to talk about. I think we've covered a bit there. There's a bit going on. Like, <laughs> it's a lot. A fair bit of carnage in the last few weeks, and it doesn't seem to be it slowing doesn't. down. Well, fingers crossed this is a, a team week. Uh, we all need it. And uh, yeah, good luck for your weeks and trying to scrape into your finals if that's where you're placed. Otherwise, enjoy the, the free week of not having to stress about finals if you didn't make it or if you're really far ahead. Um, and we will catch you next week.